I'm David McKinnon, Product Development Director here at Wires. Today, we're going to talk about amplifier installation kits. Amp kits are solely responsible for the performance of your car audio amplifier. If you don't get the power to your amplifier, it will never produce the power you want to drive your speakers. The primary component of an amp kit in terms of development cost is the power and ground wire used in that kit. Most of us assume that these wires are simply made out of copper, and in many cases, this is true. However, copper is very expensive. It costs between $3.50 to $4 per pound. An alternate material that works reasonably well as a conductor is aluminum. Aluminum costs about one quarter of the price of copper. So why don't we just use aluminum wire in kits? Because aluminum has 1.67 times the resistance that copper does per foot. The power wire found in most amp kits comes in two common forms. The aforementioned all copper kits, often called OFC or oxygen free copper, and the less expensive copper clad aluminum kits, which we refer to as CCA kits. Why do we have CCA kits if we know the wire has more resistance than copper? Because of cost. We all have budgets. Some of us can afford to drive a Bentley or a Rolls Royce. Some of us can afford to drive a Lexus or an Infiniti. I can't afford either. I'm relegated to drive a Jeep, albeit a slightly silly one. But I digress. Let's take a look at seven different amp kits and see what we find. Our reference amp kit for this comparison is the Wires Tech Series AMP KT4. We also have a kit from Raptor. It's called the ISK PK BL4 BG, a kit from F3 Street called the F3S CC4, the iConnex I4600K, a kit from Q Power that has no apparent real name, a kit from Power Pro Audio called the PPA 703TR, and finally a kit from DB Link. It's called the XK4Z. All of the kits included roughly 17 feet of power wire, labeled as 4 gauge, and 4 feet of ground wire. The kits included a 17 foot stereo interconnect, speaker wire, a fuse holder, and remote turn on wire for the amplifier. All included a variety of ring or spade terminals for power and speaker wires, and some included split loom so you can protect and conceal the wiring under the hood. We could compare any one of these components, but for the purpose of this video, we're just going to look at the power wire. In another video, we're going to compare the interconnects. When you go shopping, you have to wonder why one TV or one computer costs more than another. Ultimately, it comes down to what you get for what you pay. In the case of these amp kits, the first thing we decided to compare was the area of the conductor inside the power wire. We're sure you'll find the results as shocking as we did. We expected that at least one of the kits would be similar to the Wires Tech Series kit. And in fact, the Power Pro kit wasn't too bad. It has 94.4% of the conductor area as the Wires Tech Series kit. However, things got quickly worse from there. The iConnex, DB Link, and F3 Street kits are about 80% of the conductor area, and the Q Power is 68%. Unfortunately, that leaves the Raptor kit at a mere 62.1% of the area. Why is this a problem? Because less conductor means more resistance, and more resistance means less power is going to arrive at your amplifier. Let's go back to the bench, and we'll show you the setup that we created to measure the resistance of these power wires. Okay guys, we're out at the test bench here at the wires. Uh, I just wanted to show you the setup we have that we use to test the wire. Uh, we started with a pair of uh, Kinetic KIPS 12-80 intelligent power supplies. Each one of these supplies is capable of producing 80 amps of current. We have daisy chained them together. Okay, so we have a capability of producing 160 amps of current. The negative to the amplifier Okay, just runs direct, there's no connections in it. The positive, what it does is it goes through a 0 0.001 ohm shunt resistor. And I'll explain this later, but this allows us to measure current. We go into uh, a spare part. This is a, uh, one of the battery terminal or uh, cap terminals, um, just to make easy, reliable connections. This is our wire under test. It's 15 feet of whichever brand of wire uh, we want to measure the resistance of. We go into another block, again, just for a quick and easy, reliable connection, and then to the positive of the amplifier. Okay, the two meters that we have, they're both fluke meters, good quality meters. 
Okay, the, the 79.3, what this does is this, this is set up to measure voltage across the wire. This is the amount of voltage drop that's happening across the wire based on its resistance. The other meter, okay, uh, which is an old model 77, is set into the millivolt range, and this measures voltage across this shunt resistor. And the way this works is this is a 0.001 ohm resistor. For every amp of current that goes through this resistor, one millivolt of voltage is created across these terminals. So we can watch that on the meter. Okay, all of this then is connected to a Clarion XH7110 uh, 850 watt RMS monoblock amplifier. Okay, this is a class GH amplifier, really good sounding, good efficiency, uh, but most importantly, really good sound quality. I'm feeding the amplifier uh, from a Veldman uh, PC-based function generator, okay? Um, and I'm monitoring the output um, on the bank of load resistors. And I have this set to two ohms, two ohm load. Each of these is a 225 watt, four ohm uh, load resistor. And I can monitor the, uh, the signal and control the signal here from the PC. So I just turned it on, okay? You can see I'm producing a 60 hertz signal. Okay, at six volts RMS. Okay, this is the waveform coming out of the amplifier. And if we come back to the, the meters, I can see 51.9, 51.8 amps of current, and there's 0.328 volts dropped across the wire. Okay, we have our uh, good old Mastercraft uh, IR temperature uh, thermometer here, and this will let us keep an eye on the temperature of the wire. So we're gonna go through some different uh, samples of wire, and we're gonna show you what happens to resistance over time, what happens to temperature over time, what happens to voltage drop over time.